kilpailussa mukana Ramiren. Kotikatsomon eväät tarjoaa kotipizza. What's up everyone and welcome to the second stop of the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour 2021. We are here in Tampere, Finland for the round two front nine coverage. This coverage is brought to you by Natural Born Disc Golfer. Thank you guys for sharing your coverage with us here at Gatekeeper Media. And this commentary is brought to you by Parked Podcast. My name is Mitch Phillips. Joining me is my co-host Hayden Ricard. What's up, brother? Doing good. Ready to get into round two. See if we can stop the bleeding. Yeah, round one was brutal for our card, but let's jump in to our lead card here. Lauri Leitinen leading us not very far behind is Seppo Paiu, sponsored by Prodigy Disc. Familiar face to us here in America. Another player we're going to get to watch today is Oscar Wikström, sponsored by Disc Mania. Heard a lot about him. I'm excited to see him play today. And rounding out our card is Nestor Tukanen. These last two we've heard a lot about mm-hmm. over here in the America crowd. Yeah, familiar names for sure. Checking into our leaderboard here, Lori with a four-stroke lead, and then we're all tied for third. And, I mean, the chase card not too far off, so we're probably going to see some movement. It is moving day here at the beginning of round two. It's so mid-round two, yeah. I mean, yeah. round two definitely is going to be moving day. Put some more numbers up. Yeah. If you can make those corrections and one to make some corrections on one of the hardest holes on the course here, hole one, par four, 689 feet. You're going to want to land right about where the drone is now to be able to set up another straight shot. A lot of players are going to go to a control driver off the tee, try to limit that left to right movement. But on that second shot, you're really going to want to push as far as you can. But the out of bounds comes into play a lot. On the second and I shot. think the wind has picked up today. Yeah, you, you can see that in it. the background. You can hear it a little bit. So you're going to probably see more control. Mm-hmm. Even though this course does require a lot of control, I think you're going to see a lot more controlled disc and controlled throws mm-hmm. from these players. Slowing down the speed, slowing down the disc. going to be very needed. But it looks like it's warmed up too. Oh, and that takes a really odd kick. Shoots very, very Did far right. Did they go right. far right? Yeah. Somehow not finding out of bounds. I guess not far enough to find it. That's going to be an interesting one to see how Lodi starts the round off. Seppo to correct off of there. One I more. love his form. So compact. A little bit shorter maybe. Going to have a little bit of an uphill run up. Um, but throwing the slower speed as he did, he was going for placement. Yeah, he's not trying to go for distance there. Mm-hmm. You can see a lot of these players just going with the mid-range, trying to get it down the fairway as far as they can, and just going for placement. If Oscar can do that all day, I mean, that was one of the straightest shots we've seen on the tour so far. That Heiser flip up to flat with the mid-range, such a needed shot in your arsenal. It's a little bit too much turn. Oh, and Nestor There's OB over there, isn't there? I think it's casual. He's trying to find it, yep. No, he does find the out-of-bounds. Wow. He has found the... And we're hoping the course maintenance with the rake is yep. able to pull that out. Oh, he does find the out of bounds in the creek. Oh, so unfortunate. Surprised to not see him maybe go with a spike hyzer trying to get to that big open middle, but realizing he'd rather just take the medicine and move on. I mean, sometimes that's always the right choice and just go for it mm-hmm. on your next shot. <laughs> yeah, not the way you want to start it off here, but... See if he can correct. Gosh, that wind really coming into play. And going he OB again. Oh, worst case scenario start for Tukanen. I think. And the Lori is can? right by the trash can. Being that it's blue, maybe it's a recyclable. <laughs> Still not. <laughs> Still, yeah, it doesn't friendly, help, but friendly. Oh, my oh. goodness. And he can't move it. Can he just crush through it? Wow. And he's going all the way around. Yeah, because he took the huge movement to the right, trying to find a way. Please. He he has to have a look. I, he gets a green flag. Yeah, I saw the green flag, too. And maybe far enough to where you could just throw a full spike. What an interesting take as Seppo goes the same disc again to perfection. Take oh a bow, Mr. Paiu. Oh, my Bayou. gosh. 
That was so clean. Keeping the green flag there is a good thing. Yeah, minimizing OB strokes is definitely a good thing. <laughs> yeah, they're going to sure. come on this course. I mean, oh, not it's inevitable. Is, yeah. It's just when you're going to take it. And that was screaming for the basket. Almost as Mitchell there. grabs his chest. <laughs> <laughs> Out of breath. <laughs> Nestor trying to run it down early. Trying to give Mitch a heart attack. Bit of a bid here. I like the aggressive just vibes here on the card so far round two got to make some moves Laurie with a couple of strokes to play with here and he's found himself with the weirdest most incredible Unorthodox birdie. birdie yeah what <laughs> okay so let's go back here we off the tee as we see Seppo just tapping almost a really simple birdie as well. cycling bin yes well he threw a really, really understable mid-range. Maybe he knows the course and knows something we don't, but I cannot explain how ridiculous that birdie was. As Nestori takes a really unfortunate triple bogey to start the round. I don't know if he got lucky, but like... <laughs> big Heiser over the construction area on the right side. To find himself to, within 10 and feet. And I'm pretty sure that's all OB. Yeah, it was OB over the entire way for sure. I and mean, that just was be inside circle. I don't know. Let's move crazy. on to hole two, Hayden. Hole two, par three, 407 feet. Pretty much a hyzer shot. Spike hyzer going to want to land past this tree just a little bit to give you a layup towards this tiered basket. Yeah, it's definitely a I think this is doable, but it is. It's, it's a one. It's a one out of one out of five, one out of six shot for and sure. I, well, I mean, if he can do what he did on the last hole, I think he can do this one. Yeah, he's definitely shown the. Power. Just depends on oh, what the wind's doing here. Must be a little bit of a headwind. So you can see the disc flip up a little bit and yeah. carry forwards. Going a little long. I mean, he'll have a look from there. Yeah, he definitely has the power. We saw in round one a lot of our players may put a little bit too much height on it and drop down as Seppo reaching for an H1 here. It looks to be going a little more of an inside spike route. And puts it way inside the circle. I, I'm confused here for a sec, but I mean, Goodness. what a great pull from Seppo. But Hayden's face I, just I, now full jaw dropping moment of Seppo going to a slower speed disc, controlling the distance and throwing it 400 feet almost. It seems to be this inside line really is the play as, and he's parked. Oscar is parked. Oscar, what are we seeing? I mean, I guess this is why they're lead I mean, card. Does Nestor just ace it? <laughs> I mean, this looks great as well. They're playing this fantastic. A little just a long, little bit long. But, like, to get on the green. From what we saw first round, mm -hmm. these shots from these players are incredible. Yeah, I mean, this, they're on lead card for a reason, but Nestor just not a lot of ability to, to run that one. Puts himself in a good see spot. see how close par. Oscar is. I, I, wow. This is not a hole I expected to see parked, as we have three players on the green looking for birdie. See, Lori has a yeah, a little bit outside circle putt. actually. Taking his time. What a solid stroke there! Oh wow, what a start! Two through two. Go to the Koti Pizza. Slow mo for this putt. Straddle from probably mid circle two. Not even falling. I mean, out of the hand you was in. Yeah, and the wrist control, never breaking the pole, giving it the perfect height. The lead continues here. That's off to him for Lonely Light. Wow. And Seppo for a look as well, inside circle. Count it. Two through two. Lodi keeping his four-stroke lead, but when you have another player playing a similar style of golf and just... 
They get chasing you, pumped, you. I yeah. think. There, there's a, a match play vibe to it. There's an excitement on the card, as we're going to see Oscar Vigas. This is a tap-in. Yeah. Um, excuse me? Three of our players taking birdie here on hole two. And we're in for a treat here. Exciting <laughs> to see these scores already. It's not waiting any longer. Jump into hole three, par three, 387 feet. Very opposite of the hole we just played. Going straight shot, most likely gonna see mid ranges to get able to control the height, control the glide, and then finishing right into this woods line here. So we're gonna see Lori go to a fairway driver actually. We talked about it in round one. The forehand is there, but it's it's pretty tough to to it's get it to, to push as as well without fading out early. I really think the backhand is to play with the height and, and just let it glide. Hitting a tree late, maybe kicking him just outside circle, but really good line there. You saw round one, a lot of the players went sky, like a little mm -hmm. too, like higher up. Or and floating. Lori just went right in the middle and hit that gap. Very understable disc here for Seppo. Oh. I think you hit the same tree there. It's that last leader. tree. Mm -hmm. But they're shaping this hole very easily. Yeah. So you see Oscar, you go down to the mid-range, trying to go a little bit more glide. This looks early. Get through, maybe. He knows it's a little too early. Yeah, thankfully, there's no out of bounds here, so not going to have too much damage, but with the thickness of these trees, and it's, it's tough you to find a line. You can find trouble real quick. Mm -hmm. Just getting caught up on the edge. That was looking really good there. Yeah, it's tough from the tee there, too. I mean, you, you're really blind once you start turning your disc, so mm -hmm. definitely good to have spotters here on the course to have an idea where this landed, but expecting just to pitch, pitch out, out here again. from Oscar. Mm -hmm. Really yep. can't do much from in there. I mean, playing for bogey at best is what you're doing from this. If you go early. I don't think he was thinking bogey with that upshot, but... Not really, but I think he needed the power. He knew he needed the power to get all the way back in there. Right. So we see Nestor, he just good shaping jump putts. That's a very touchy thing that I've seen a lot of these European players do is that Anheuser jump putt and not mm -hmm. putting too much, you know, torque on it with the wrist is going to have to navigate some serious trees here. It's late and then. Just low. That was a great bid. Watch that the whole way. Seppo looking to Seppo. pull to the stepper. Ooh. Oh, sit down. Sit. sit. Doesn't go too far, but still I enough mean, not, to kind of not not a fun one to come back no, to. No, definitely not. Oh. oh. Off and the band holds. and in. Got to be glad to grab that one and stay for the par. Yeah, we mentioned it in our first stop here in the Project Tour. I mean, your your sponsor is the tour. You're putting plastic into the basket. There's a little bit of love here for these Prodigy. I would hope so. Everybody else cleaning up their pars. On to hole four, par four, 860 feet. This is a big hyzer shot. It's almost a straight hy straight hyzer to finish up here. It's a two shot par four coming up to the landing space. And I mean, it's pretty clean. You just have to get over the top. Yeah, definitely one of the more open 
par fours here on the course. Still some out of bounds to be found yep. on both sides, but like you said, it's going to be, you're throwing an, a hyzer out of the hand, but it's really more of a straight it's shot. Straight Let the disc hyzer. do the work and, and move left as it flips up. And you can see the wind and hear it just moving this disc around up and down. And that's the mistake you'll make is just pushing a little it's bit a too straight. It's a hard mistake to not go that way. Right, because you're trying to find the distance, but then you end up flipping up just a little bit too much and then you can't really tell the wind you know 400 plus feet out there is not let the disc fade as much simple going to a d1 maybe trying to make a little bit of a correction more of an overstable finish yep you can see that disc getting lifted really high up it's a sit i think it's going to be on the edge mm -hmm. but i mean maybe that's his play just be as far left as he can yeah it opens up the second shot for sure this looks to be too straight as well. It flipped up too much. We might find the out of bounds. I think the I out, think out of bounds. Yeah, out of bounds starts further, further up. My fault there. Further up. Yeah, it's doing it's the that same wind. thing. That wind is left to right. It's brutal. I'm surprised they're getting through those trees mm -hmm. right there that the camera oh. crew is hiding behind. Yeah, Oscar actually goes really far into the right side of this fairway. We have a spike forehand coming up for both of these players. So high up. That's gonna stall. We'll see how it plays out here as we jump to Lori. Not really sure where he's out in the fairway here. See what he has for his next shot, but he, it seems like he doesn't have much left to get to the green. It's Oscar. He, I think it's Sky Anheuser. Yeah, it's got to be to be able to shape it. Oh, I love it. Roller? That was a Sky Roller. I mean, the way that came out of his hand, that was definitely a roller intent. Yeah, if that lands at just a little bit more angle, I mean, that would have been one of the best shots I've ever seen on coverage. You can see Seppo here. I think he's going Heiser. Ooh, Anheuser. If that holds. Oh my goodness. This looks beautiful. Hit a oh tree and kick gosh. right. What an incredible line to even see there. The creativity. I mean, to follow that all the way. That was mm -hmm. uh, that was really cool. Oh, catching just barely on the way out. Thankfully, he doesn't go too deep back into it. We're probably going to see another sky forehand. And Nestler just not able to catch a break here on hole four. Just trying to find the green. Give yourself a pretty simple putt. Going low line, actually. That's a hard angle to get, mm -hmm. I think, if you're going low line. But if you go sky... Yes, you have might not have the distance, mm -hmm. but you'd have the right angle. This looks really good if it can sit. Yep. Yeah. The way his putting's been so far. Edge of circle. Be, should be confidence coming into that putt here. And something we're already seeing from this card is just the amount of scramble that's needed. And this front nine is where you're scoring. Yeah. I mean, the back nine, if you take any small kicks and everything, which I'm excited to see how these players attack it, but the scramble percentages here are incredible. I mean, they're throwing shots that are very far out of the way, but somehow finding birdies, finding ways to make it work as we see a run here off the top from Nestori. And Seppo here with a look for his birdie. Just off the top. Mm. Another one hitting the cage. It's Lori. I mean, they're they're neck and neck right now. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a four-stroke difference, I mean, it's a battle. Great par. And Oscar is scrambling to find the par. 
staying it even for the round. And our leader here dropping a stroke to Seppo. Oh, unnecessary just to touch off again. A little bit high. That's going to be the triple bogey there for necessary. Just very unfortunate. Moving on to hole five, one of the shortest holes here on the course, but not without danger as you have this out of bounds so close there on the left. Bush is just far right, totally blind off the tee. This is really birdie or die, Hayden. I think so as well. You definitely want to get this one. And, and you see players go to... into a good position approaching the rest of the front nine. Yeah, and this is one you kind of find the distance and stick to I it. Believe I believe that's OB. Yep, and Seppo just finding that left side. See some players disc up and maybe throw a higher shot, trying to get it to spike, as the conditions definitely have dried a little bit since yesterday, hoping not to find any skips. That's the play, really, to be a little bit right, as Oscar finds. It is a death putt right after, but if you're close enough, you kind of give yourself a chance. As I think Laurie's disking up to a faster disc here to try to find some, some dig. Need that to sit. Also Dave. finding out of bounds. Wow. Surprised it actually skipped there. Mm -hmm. Oscar, you in a great spot to be able to pick up some strokes in the leader. Similar position to Vikstrom. Nestor, he find himself. Yeah, and Lauder going to the anvil, which is a great, I mean, it's a great decision on this hole, but definitely can find some over stability. Throwing the baseline plastic too, making sure the skip, but just a touch off to find it, but Good not birdie. a touch off. Finding his first birdie, the round. Seppo here for his par. Good par. Yeah, it's the hole where really a, it's par birdie every time. Oscar, are you coming within one stroke of Seppo? So we're halfway through. The front nine here. Only a three stroke lead. Yeah. Moving into hole six, par three, 400 feet. Going to be a straight shot at the basket. A little bit of turnover, but this green is guarded. And I don't think you're getting through. No, I mean, if off the first shot. It's one of these holes where you've played it so much in practice. Is he going roller? I think he was trying to. With a mid range, was it? I believe. I think that what was a, a mid range. I great. don't know his play there, but yeah. I mean, this looks great. Get all the way through. As I was saying, I mean, be able to find the most open That's, gap you that can. That goes long. Yeah, it does. You may have a look though. That, that it definitely opens up on that left side, maybe being about pin high a little bit longer. But for Oscar, he did. I look like he was really going to the roller there. We'll never know his play. Yeah. But, I mean, it the way that came out of his hand mm -hmm. looked like he was setting up the roller. Yeah, it was definitely wacky as 
think Seth was going... Is that roller as well? Yeah. Going with an F7, I believe. And it's out of his hand. That needs to curl. That goes out of bounds. I think it does. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Very interesting play to go to the roller with how thick the grass is. The consistency in that shot. I, I mean, just, they've done it in practice to, to try it. Maybe they have. I just don't like the... I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting it's, one. It's the first two rollers we've seen. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to go roller here. It's worked for them in the past. I mean, but, they're better than we are, so... Yeah, I, <laughs> yes, of course. I'm not judging their, their play, at, like, making decisions. But I just... I don't think you need to go roller, but if it works for them, it works for them. And that's what they're going to go with. Yeah. It's interesting to see, I will say that. Yeah, the creativity meter on this card is through the roof. So Oscar he lays up really well. You're picking up a stroke here on Seppo unless he can make some magic happen. Yeah, not really much of a window. Speaking of not much of a window, there's it's so guarded. Mm -hmm. Again, you're just just not much of a look. Great putt there from Circle's Edge for our leader, picking up two on Seppo. I just think the roller there is an unforced error. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting play, but, it, I mean, it's worked for him in the past, so keep on with it, I guess. Yeah. Why change anything? Moving on to hole seven, par three, 318 feet. This one is asking for rollaways, but the play is going to be mid-range or a putter, kind of a nose up to match the angle of the hill. We've seen some forehands here if you can really dig in, but as the ground has dried out a little bit today and the wind is definitely here, attacking that hill, nose up, trying to slide up is going to be the play. But if you roll down at all, it's it's huge. Just You're throwing straight up. We saw players hit the hill and crash down below. And this looks to skip off the top. And just lay up. And, I mean... That's what I would do from there. I think most of these players are going to do that. Saw that in round one as well. Mm -hmm. If you're outside and also down below, you're really just going to lay up for the par. As Not Oscar goes to the forehand here, trying to just spike it. Yeah. Talked about this forehand in the first round. As he clips that last tree. Just a little bit too wide. I think he might have held onto it too much. Mm-hmm. needs to get up just a little bit yeah kind of trying to read there. yeah after watching lottery's shot you kind of expected that to be lifted a little bit more i think see if seppo can correct going to that trusty mid-range he's been throwing today yeah a little more of a turnover line Yep, get it to stick. Yeah, and Seppo has a much more of like a frisbee background as well, so the lines he throws, maybe not the most overstable discs. He shapes that left to right line very well and throws a lot of mid ranges. That's about all you can do there. From being at distance on this one, you definitely just want to lay up. You see Lori doing the same thing, making a no question par putt. Yeah, if this hole's later in the round, maybe you're giving it a go. But being you know in the first third here, it's just not really worth it. But being at this distance, expecting, I think at Nestor's distance, you go for it. That yeah, takes a hit off the cage. Hopefully, it sat.
Great birdie there from Seppo. Good comeback from the last hole. Mm -hmm. Take one back from Lori. As Oscar cleans up his par, Lori to do the same. Yeah, and as we said before, I mean, this front nine is really where you want to score. Hole eight, par three, 509 feet. You'll see the OB come here close on the right side, really making it a two shot par three, um, being at 509. And you got the OB right behind the basket. Yeah, I mean, this one is, is reachable for most Some of the players, players here they, on this card. I would say so. But with the out of bounds and how close it is there on the left side, and then having to not really know the wind all the way out there, being able to run it the entire way, I stand corrected as Seppo puts it almost. No, okay. I, was, I thought that was pin high for a second. No. But it's close. Further than most players making this just a really simple shot. Yeah, I mean, this is one you could, you could really just, just throw into. spike, spike, and walk away with a par and not worry about it too much as you see Laurie here not taking off too much distance but just putting himself in a easy spot to attack the difficulty is definitely the second shot yeah with the OB right behind you don't want to leak there I think you might see some of these players go with the forehand approach mm -hmm. the forehand approach kind of limiting the skip we'll see how they attack speaking of attack okay you can reach it. Oscar Wikström can reach it. My goodness. That was a great shot. Yeah, 509 feet. Highs are the entire way. And to stay clean over the top of those trees. Yeah. Nestor, you looking to play more of a layup play here? Yeah. To go back door nearly over that last tree over the spotter. What a line from Wikström. Trying to put it close. For an easy par is the goal. And not worry about that OB. Mm -hmm. And Seppo, even though he made it pretty far down here, just not, not really messing with it. I don't blame them. Mm -mm. Especially with the chance you go high, these prodigy baskets tend to want to just skip off of it and go straight out of bounds. But... I mean, if I'm Vikstrom, I'm gone. Oh, yeah. You, no I doubt. Mean, you got the distance. You're there. You're inside circle He's one. He's closer than Lori's approach here. Good, confident putt. can already see the smile on his face there realizing he's like I did it and he doesn't know this now but he is the only player to birdie yeah, it, <laughs> got the celebration there as well yeah I mean the only player to birdie I'd this be in celebrating round two, I'd say there's probably less than five of these the entire tournament probably wow what distance display there from Oscar Going from one of the longest par threes in the course to the shortest par three on the course, hole nine, 249 feet. Again, birdie or die, but just the difference in hole to hole that we've seen so far on this front nine, it doesn't really let up. It's give it everything you have and then now throw a touch shot. So let's see how our players are able to attack it here. And he makes it through. Mm -hmm. Oh, he got lucky there that that was able to make it through those trees. Yeah, and these this trees here like to do some really interesting stuff. We've seen, I think we saw five kicks 
off one shot, I think, from on first round. Yeah. Round one, it just somehow still made it all the way out. This is bread and butter here for Seppo. Oh, you see the you see him do that all the time on his mm-hmm. Instagram. Lordy to match. I think he was hyzer, like, yeah. expecting a flip up from that. It looked to be a fuse, I think. And he didn't get the turn. Yeah, I can to understand mid range would just. It's kind of an interesting spot to be. You go to more of an understable disc, but you have to put a little a lot of torque behind mm-hmm. it, and then you have that fear of if I turn it too much. So definitely an interesting one. I'm looking for an ace run here, going long. It's Nestori. I believe that's a Luna from him. That was a Keystone. That was Luna. He's just kind of sponsored. I can't read then. <laughs> this just in. Hayden doesn't know how to read. Need my eyes checked. <laughs> oh, good bid there. Oh, Off the top well. two. Mm-hmm. Missing the opportunity to come back to even. And step out to... Oh, wow. Uncharacteristic. That was a very errant error from there. Yeah. Sometimes it's those ones that are that close that can get in your head, make it weird, even for some of the top players here in the world. The nerves are still there. They're still human, making interesting and unfortunate errors. It is nice to know that they're still hum- human mm-hmm. and not a robot. Yeah. It feels like it sometimes watching the lines that they're taking, but then oh, even yeah. the shortest putts. From a similar distance here, Seppo. Yeah, he knows that that's one he wants back. And all pars there on the shortest hole on the course. Surprising from our lead card. They're definitely going to go into round three thinking about these. Mm-hmm. and Knowing those are the corrections they need to make in the yep, final. But I agree. Wrapping up the front nine here from round two. Let's check in with the leaderboard from our card. Two down from three of our players and unfortunate for Nestori to take the, the two triple bogeys. Still all the same scores except for Jonas Alto shooting four down, jumping up the leaderboard. Nicholas Antela also shooting three down to the front nine, put himself in the mix as we go into the back nine here around two. It's been a, I think there could have been more birdies on that front nine. I think there needed to be. I mean, but Just looking a, at the rest of the, the way people are playing. We'll I know you said out. moving day, and I mean, there wasn't a lot of moving, mm-hmm. but I think the back nine, you're going to see a lot more movement for yep. sure. Back nine scores tougher. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you real soon.